Yeah. What about t uh, 285, Pastor Bonnie? That's not that's not that's not that's not that's in, in addition. Okay.
those days, I'm going to believe you. And, and I tell you folks, we've got family, we've got friends that we know by, by their lives and by the things in it that their ticket hasn't been purchased. Oh, but how do we need to keep promoting the gospel of Jesus Christ right there so that we all can get on board Amen. one day and go sailing with Jesus forever. You say about that old song this week. God bless you. to be in the Lord's house this morning. Good to see all of you here. We appreciate uh, your presence. We're always thankful to see the members of Mount Zion in church. I love having visitors, but I love having our members here, and it's good to see you. We appreciate you and love you and thankful for a good week of Bible school and uh, just an amazing, amazing week. And I know uh, there's been a lot said, and I, I think it just went wonderful. And I know all the work that went in by, to it to make it happen. And what I, I, Mount Zion, you're just blessed. And I'm so thankful today for the good words that we've heard about Bible school. And I hope that you were able to come and participate. And, uh, and folks, let me encourage you, continue to invite those kids that came during the week. If they don't have a church to go to, they don't have a home church, they're not attending, let's invite them to be in be with us here at Mount Zion Sunday morning, Sunday night, attendance for Sunday school, Wednesday night, Brother Anthony, we want them to be in church with us. And uh, of course, I know probably everybody's heard the news this morning, Sister Carol passed away, and uh, we're going to lift Mike, Michael and Anita up in prayer, they'll be make, making those arrangements early in the week, and of course Anita's family Pray for them, pray for her husband, Mike, and then uh, Michaela and Andy as they're traveling from uh, Dover, they'll, it'll take them. I don't know what their plans are. Don't know what they're in the middle of, but let's just pray that they'll have good, safe travels and get here, and uh, let's lift that family up. Uh, Carol is perfectly healed, 
and praise the Lord today in a better place, no doubt. Let me just say that. I, I was thinking about that. Somebody said that she's in a better place. Let me just tell you, she's in the presence of God Almighty. Amen? Amen. It's more than a better place. It's where God is. It really is. Amen? Listen, if I was in the jailhouse this morning, uh, laying in the ditch would be a better place than the jailhouse, wouldn't it? As long as, but hallelujah, she's in the presence of God. And I'm thankful this morning that she left behind a testimony. And I'm thankful that you're here. And I'm thankful to have Brother Mike Irvin with us this morning. Good to have him and his family with us. Good to see them. And Lord laid him on our heart. We called him, talked to him a little while this week. And he was able to come preach for us this morning. So we're going to turn it over to him. Before we do, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Uh, Brother Donnie Maney, lead us to the Lord in prayer. good to be at Mount Zion to look out over the congregation and uh, over the past past year I've not been pastoring I've been able to to get out and, and to visit and be at places maybe I hadn't got to be in a while and uh, and uh, you know uh, I, I've made this observation other places and y'all kind of got the same problem here at Mount Zion, y'all running a little low on old folks. <laughs> you know, when you, <laughs> as, as you have birthdays, you consider old folks, folks that have more birthdays than you have. And, uh, and we know, we know where they are, and, and we, we miss them, especially, uh, you know, as they sung the song, Precious Memories There, but, uh, I, I guess I guess that's a good problem to have, ain't it? When you get to run it a little low on old folks because this old world's full of trouble and trial. It's good to see a house full of kids and young folks and young families. Amen. And, uh, it's just a... Yes, it is. It is. It's good to see each and every one of you. It really is. If you'd like to read with us this morning, you might turn in St. Luke's Gospel to chapter number 9. And I'd like to read... Uh, several verses there in your hearing. Uh, but God laid a thought on my heart a few nights ago. I, I was trying to read here and there. Stephen had called, and I was trying to get it on my heart what God had had me to use. And I came across this scripture, and I had read it before, and maybe even used part of it before. But God gave me a thought that I had never, I never tried to preach on before. This time of year, now God's blessed me. God's been very good to me. I thought of Michael 
whenever I learned the news when I got here, uh, we're, we're about the same age, and uh, I can only... I could only shudder at the thoughts of, of my wife uh, stepping on out into eternity ahead of me and the loneliness. Uh, I've got a friend there that I see most of the mornings. We uh, go to, I, sometimes I go up there to a little country store and have a cup of coffee. And uh, his wife passed away a few months back. And you can tell he just don't know hardly what to do with himself. And, uh, but my daddy, this will be our 27th Father's Day since Daddy slipped on off the glory, and uh, great, great, great man of God, and he, uh, it, I, my personality and his personality is very different. Uh, but I can remember uh, as as and I worked with Daddy, except for just a few years that I worked a public job. Uh, me and Daddy farmed together the rest of his life and, and through my life. But I can remember. Uh, you know, if, if you've ever worked with you, uh, with you, you, your daddy, or if you've ever worked with your son, or maybe mothers and daughters, I don't know, it, there's always differences of opinion about things. Uh, and it's, it's a unique, it's a blessed situation, but it's a different situation. And it, uh, in that situation, one has to learn to give, I guess you might say. And, and my daddy was so good, so good. I look back now, and I wish I could ask him questions about things. Uh, but And I will one of these days. But you know those things, baby, that I like to ask him questions about now. They won't make no difference when I get the glory with you. They won't make no difference. But daddy, daddy had a saying. Sometimes, you know, we live in a very confrontational society. We really do. Every way you turn, people... Or just seem like they're seeking confrontation, and and they don't they, they thrive on confrontation. They really do, and that's the reason uh, the the world's becoming so wicked. Uh, uh, it's it hatred is taking over, and hatred's what causes confrontation many times. But uh, me and Daddy, we get in a discussion about how something ought to be done, or or a Daddy one of Daddy's favorite sayings was, "Don't you think you ought." And it was just one word. Don't you think you ought? And, <laughs> and then if it didn't happen in a day or two, it became, when are you gone? And that was one word also. When are you gone? But uh, if, if I stood my ground and just kept on that I wasn't going to give in and he wouldn't, didn't, didn't look like he was going to give in, but it would finally come to a place that Daddy would say, just have it your way. Just have it your way. And a lot of folks might consider that weakness, you know. But now that I've got to be uh, older in life, I realize just how much strength it takes to be able to say that and to mean it. Now, I ain't saying that Daddy quit loving me and quit wanting to tell me the right way to go and quit instructing me and guiding me. But he came to the realization that there were some lessons that I was just going to have to learn the hard way. And I believe that that's what Jesus was trying to tell his disciples in these verses that I'm about to read. That's good. Beginning with verse number 46 in the eight, ninth, chapter, ninth chapter of St. Luke's Gospel. And I ask that you pray for me this morning. Then there arose a reasoning among them, which of them should be greatest. And Jesus, perceiving the thought of their heart, took a child and set him by him. And he said unto them, Whosoever shall receive this child in my name, receiveth me. And whosoever shall receive me, receiveth him that sent me. For he that at least among you all, the same shall be great. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, because he followed not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. And then it came to pass, when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. 
And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of, for the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. And we're going to leave off reading right there. And I ask again that you pray for me. But as we begin with this 46th verse here, we see that the disciples, and I believe that this is a common problem that we, you and I, face each and every day. I was thinking about this message. And, and, and you know, I thought about maybe I ought to say to start with, and I don't know anything about what's going on in anybody's family. Don't know anything about what's going on in anybody's business. I don't know what anything about anybody's going on in Mount Zion Church. And I thought about, well, maybe I ought to say, I don't want nobody to take this personal. But folks, if the Word of God is ever going to do us any good, if a message is ever going to do us any good, praise the Lord, every one of us needs to take it personal. Don't think about what John Johnson ought to do, or don't think about what Ronnie Adams ought to be enlisted to. You just take it personal, and I'll take it personal, and we'll get some good out of it. What God would have us to. But we find that they was reasoning among the disciples. And you know we've all come to that place. They's reasoning. That was a pleasant way to put it. They was discussing. I don't know if they begin to realize. Maybe they begin to grasp again and again. The Bible tells us that they just couldn't comprehend that Jesus was going to be crucified. But they begin to realize that there was going to be a kingdom. They begin to realize that this ministry, that these teaching, that what Jesus was doing was going to amount to something. Amen. And they begin to sort out the pecking order. They begin to find out. They begin to reason among themselves. And I'm sure that everyone, you know, every one of us, we always got a reason. When me and Daddy would be in those discussions around the farm, well, there'd be a, there was a lot of things that Daddy depended on me to do. And there was a lot of things that I depended on him to do. Well, it was just our little area, I guess you might say. I don't know if you'd call it our area of expertise, but that was just what we was responsible for. And maybe these disciples, they'd got to that. And they was reasoning, well, who was going to be in charge? Who was going to be the greatest? Who was going to who was going to call the shots? But here we find that the Lord perceived. Aren't you glad that we serve a Savior that knows what's going on yes, in our heart? Sir. You know, man hears what we say. That's the reason. That's the reason that with God the sins of omission is just as critical and just as important and just as black and just as sinful as the sins of commission. Because man sees what we do. Man hears what we say. But folks, God looks upon our heart. God sees our heart. I'm glad you don't see all the things that go through my head. I'm glad that no one knows. I'm glad that even my wife. Oh, you know, old saying of God over at the house one time, we was talking about this, we was talking about the difference between thinking something and saying something. He said, you know, you can't keep the birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from building a nest in your hat. And that's when we begin to just take, take up with it. And they was discussing who was going to be the greatest. They wanted to know, well, who's going to come out on top? The Lord perceived what they was thinking about. And he went and he gathered him up a child. And he said he just set that little fella down beside him. <laughs> don't you know that? Don't you know that little fella felt like he was really something? Sure. He was a happy the Lord that day. He was a happy the Lord that day. And oh, how did he set that little child down? Maybe he's a little shy, maybe he's a little backward, maybe he's a little bashful, about to turn red face, might even try to hide behind the Lord's elbow. But the Lord said, now you want to be great? Said you become as one of these little children. You see, right to start with, the Lord was going to take care of that ambition that we have in our life. Folks, I believe every one of us ought to want to amount to something, but we ought to first and foremost want to amount to something for Jesus. Amen. For Jesus. Amen. You say, well, what's the difference in that and ambition? Because, folks, when we want to amount to something for Jesus, it's easy to prefer our brothers above ourselves. It's easy to real. It's easy to do like my 
my daddy got to where he could do and just say, just have it your way. Maybe knowing it was going, maybe knowing it was going to cost him a little something also. Maybe it's going to cost him a little extra work. Maybe it was going to cost him a few bushels of grain or a few bales of hay. But you see, he said, you get that ambition behind you, and then you can really, truly be great. And then it was just a minute, John said, he said that John answered him. John answered him. Folks, we, <laughs> man, we got to be careful when we begin to answer the Lord. You see, John was arguing with the Lord. John was beginning to pursue his side of the gate. Maybe John, maybe John had a reason. To think that maybe he turned, oh, he knew the Lord loved him, and he was close to the Lord. And folks, just because we're close to the Lord does not always mean that we've got everything right Amen. in our life. Right. But we find here that he goes on, he said he answered the Lord. And he asked him, and he answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, but we forbid him. We forbid him because he went not with us. You see, we're coming right on down here to control. Folks, I tell you what, that's hard to turn loose of, ain't it? That's really, really. You see, that's why the Lord had gathered that little child up there and set him down behind. Because a little child, when we're a child, uh, it, I wouldn't say it comes natural to mine because it ain't never come natural to me, to mine. But folks, we just get a little more used to it when we're a child. But as we grow older, we get used to having our way and getting our way. And did John, he wanted his way. And he said, they saw this man casting out devils. You know, he didn't say he was trying to cast out devils. He said he was casting out devils. Folks, the visible evidence was there that he was on the Lord's side. He was on the Lord's side because the, spirit, the, 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 the power was casting out those devils simply by the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, folks, there's preachers that I don't care much about. There's preachers, that, now there's preachers I really love to hear them preach. There's preachers I really love to hear them say. There's some I'd rather hear saying than preach. There's some I'd rather hear preach than say. I'm in that category. You may not even like my preaching, but you ain't heard me say it. <laughs> mm. Bless your heart. But we find here... We find here that the Lord was, the spirit of the Lord was acknowledging that though this man was a little different and he didn't run with the same crowd, but he was on the right track. Folks, whenever we get ready to give up that control. You know, folks, we say, well, if I give up this control over this, this segment of my life or this this portion of my life, or, or this is this is, this is, is it going on in my family? If I give up this control, well, then I won't be able to get ever get it back. But folks, a true Christian, a true strong Christian, realizes that I'm not in control, and she ain't in control, and he ain't in control, but he's the one that's in control. Whether we like it or not, or whether we accept it or not, Jesus is in control of our lives. <laughs> oh, you know, <laughs> I can remember, I can remember my little niece. She, she, uh, she's severely autistic, and we thought Heather never was going to walk. She's about two years old before she ever started walking, but when she started walking, she just went to running. And all oh, how that she'd run out there in the yard around Daddy and Mama's, and they bunch of oak trees there. And y'all know how they are, roots sticking up in the yard and all. And I could see Heather how that she would run that little that little thing just to run it. And Daddy would go along behind her, and he'd hold his arms and he'd hold his hands just like that. Oh, it broke his heart to see her fall. He was going to be there, but she didn't see him. But he was right there with you. Folks, that's the way you and I are as God's children. Amen. Maybe we ain't looking at him because he's right above us, he's right behind us, and he's all around us. But he's there to kick us. Folks, he really is in control. Yes, he is. He's in control of our life. And the Lord just said, Now, John, 
He said, just leave him alone. If he's not against us, then he must be for us. Yeah. You know, there's times. <laughs> Here a few years ago, they come out with a movie on television. And man, didn't we all get sick of it. The name of the movie was Frozen. And them girls, they sung that. They, I just dare what they sung it. Let it go, let it go, let it go. We got so tired of that. But you know, folks, every once in a while, we as God's children, if we just get right with the Lord and right with our brothers and sisters, face some things that we can let go. Amen. We can get like, you say, but I don't like that. Had a friend, had a friend. He began to tell, he tell, he, there's a lot of things, <laughs> there's a lot of things he didn't like. And whenever he told you he didn't like it, he said it with every ounce of his body. He'd shake his head just as hard as he could shake it side to side. He'd make the terrible frown on his face you ever saw. And he'd say, I don't like it, I don't like it, I don't like it. He'd say it three times, back to back. You didn't have to wonder. You didn't have to wonder. But you see, folks, there's just things in our life that we just have to let go and let God handle. Right. And that's what we find in these next verses. It says it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers before his face. And they went into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him. Because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. You see, there was always hard feelings between the Jews and the Samaritans. Mm -hmm. And between the Samaritans and the Jews. One didn't like the other. And the other didn't like that one. It was just kind of a mutual dislike. It seemed like that's the society we live in now, ain't it? Everybody don't like somebody. And it seems just about everybody. That somebody don't like. Mm. But we find here that they was going to stop by this village of Samaritans. And the Lord didn't have nothing against the Samaritans. We see how that, why, you know, the Samaritan woman there, they inspired, invited him in. He stayed two or three days with them. After that one woman saw the light, turned from her wicked ways, and mm -hmm. began to testify. The Lord didn't have nothing against the Samaritans. But the Samaritans had something against him. You know, that's when it really hurts. That's when it really hurts. Is when somebody does those that we love wrong, maybe does us wrong. Yeah. It don't just hurt our feelings. It hits, oh, it breaks our heart. Mm -hmm. And the first thought that comes to this old carnal mind is retaliation. We want to get even. We want to straighten them out. We want to, they got to see it our way. They just got to see it our way. But the Lord, and James and John, they was going to straighten them out. They was going to do something about it. Lord, will thou that we command fire to come down out of heaven. You know, they had Bible to back them up because they said, you know, Elijah done it. Elijah done it. Why not us? Why not now? And it said the Lord rebuked. You see, he had been admonishing them, and he had been correcting them, but he began to rebuke them right here. He said, you just don't know the shape you've got it. You just don't know what you've become. You know, folks, I really truly believe that the vast majority of the world today, the people we come in contact, if they could just see themselves, as our Lord sees them, that they would be so ashamed. Folks, if we could see ourselves as the Lord sees us, there'd be a lot of things about me that I would be embarrassed about. There'd be a lot of things that I would be, oh, be so ashamed of. Hallelujah. They said, let us destroy you, Lord. And then he said, I didn't come to destroy men's lives. You know, I watched a program on television the other night. Yes! It was one of these old crime drama things, true crime. I, I, after it came out what the man had done, I told Robin, I said, I'd have killed him in a heartbeat. Mm. He 
But you know, in the eyes of God, I'm just as guilty as a sinner. I was before I did this sin. You see, that's what the Bible says that hell is full of murderers, liars, foremongers, and all that work is evil. Mm. And you say, people say, I just don't believe the Lord's going to let anybody to die and go to hell. I just don't believe a just, loving God would, would send people to hell. But he stung. He stung. He stung. If you're here today and you've never been saved, you've never trusted the Lord as your Savior. You see, that's the reason his eyes were steadfast toward Jerusalem. Because at Jerusalem... My sin debt was going to be paid for. Amen. James and John's sin debt was going to be Amen. paid for. The Samaritans that refused him, their sin debt was going to be paid for on the cross of Calvary Amen. at Jerusalem, and his face was set steadfast toward Jerusalem. They wasn't nothing going to stop him from dying that I might be saved. Amen. And you too. And you say, I just can't believe that the Lord would send me to hell. He won't send you to hell. But as my daddy used to tell me, he'll let you have it your way if you refuse to come on the terms of the gospel. He said, I didn't come to destroy men's lives, but I came to save them. And as they get a song of invitation ready, and as they come to the instruments this morning, I don't know anything about anybody here today, but if you're here today and you're lost and on your way to a devil's hell, you say, I just don't. Folks, if you don't believe that he'll just let you have it your way, consider the two things on the cross. One, acknowledged and confessed and repented and Jesus says, this day shalt thou be with me in paradise. And the other one on the other side, no, I believe one was just as close as the other. The one saw just the same day as the other Amen. saw. The one, they were just the same. Except he let one have his way. And he let the other have his way also. Hallelujah. For the one that chose paradise. Amen. But he let That's that good, other one die. That's good. And lift his eyes in the devil's hell as far as we know. My daddy loved me. Oh, how he loved me. Man, he, he loved me. He prayed for me. And I still believe I'm a reaping. I still believe I'm a reaping. And I'm still enjoying blessings that he prayed for, that he left behind. I believe I'm still tears that he shed over me and my family. Folks, they're still here. They're still here. I believe they'll still be here even when I'm gone. And my Jesus loves me more. And Jesus loves you more too. Jesus didn't love one thief more than he did the other. He died for both of them. He didn't come to destroy men's lives, but he came to save. Are you needing to be saved today? As we stand and as the preacher comes out, it's between you and he. Please go to the Lord's way. Please go his way. Choose Jesus today. Amen.